Hi everybody, it's Molly at So-and-So's Place. How are you doing this evening? All right, I'm gonna do something a little bit different tonight. I'm gonna to be working on my serger. I've got two projects I've got to get finished up. And I don't use a serger a whole lot, and I know a lot of people are a little bit intimidated by them. But what I'm working on has straight seams. So this is what I'm gonna show you. All right, I've marked my stitch line right here, and I've got my pins running. So I've already cut my fabric, I've got just a few pins in it, and I'm going to be stitching right along this line right here. I have my knife blade set on my serger, and this is a four seam, uh, four thread serger. So there's a couple things you can do with the serger whenever you're ready to start stitching. I know the light's a little bit bright, but I hope you can see this. One thing you can do to get your fabric under your presser foot is you can lift the front of your presser foot and just slide your fabric under it to get started or you can use the foot lifter over on this one happens to have it on the side and put your fabric under it so what I'm going to do is since I've got a lot of fabric I'm going to go ahead and use the presser foot lifter now that I've got my fabric under it I'm going to go ahead and pull that thread because these things move fast all right, I'm gonna put my fingers on my thread tail. Here's my thread tail. I know you really can't see it too well with the lighting, but I'm gonna put my fingers on the thread tail because I wanna be able to give it a little bit, I wanna have a, my hands on it, all right? All right, so here we go. Now I know you can't see it from where you are, but it's cutting off this fabric. The serger you keep feeding all the way through and you let it make that chain and there we go I have my seam those little snippers are crap all right now I know I haven't told you a lot about what I made but here's the first part of that seam I've been kind of in production mode over the weekend but this is what I'm doing. I am making, shh, I'm making a satin pillowcase for my granddaughter. I've already done my two side seams on this little pillowcase. All right, see that? And what I'm going to do now, this is the outside, the little round edge on the outside of the pillowcase. So what I did was I took one of my pillowcases here at the house, you don't need a pattern for this, and just brought home a yard of fabric and then like eight inches of another yard of fabric, of another piece of fabric, and cut a little strip of something cute that coordinated. Actually, I'm doing two pillowcases, one for each granddaughter, because they've got a little brother coming. So, you know, they need something special. All right, so here we go. So I'm going to turn that around this way, just like this. All right, so you see that? So now my tube is right side out. Listen, there's a lot of fiddling when you're sewing, okay? And y'all just sit here and fiddle with me. Just like this. got that. Listen y'all, it's been a long day. See it's dark outside? See the moon? Can you see the moon over my shoulder there? Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to match up. Here's my seam lines, okay? See my seam lines? I'm going to match my seam lines up and turn this right side out. Just like this. This is a very simple Serger 101 class, which is about my skill level with a Serger. So if you want, if you want to get one, you want to learn how to use it, this is a very simple thing you can do with it. Alrighty, 
now. All right, so you see right here, I am matching up. There's where I folded everything inside, okay? One seam to one seam, and then I'm gonna match it up so that I have right sides together. Do you see that? Okay, and I'm gonna put a couple pins in this. Now I'm gonna pin this just like I would, just like I did that last one. This is not like regular pinning. When this is not like regular pinning with the sewing machine. I'm gonna put my pin in it just like this, a little bit away you see that pin right there? Let me get one with a white head. Okay, I'm going to go down just a little bit further here. I'm going to go about four inches, and I'm matching up. Can you see all my edges are matched? One of these classes, I'm going to show you all how to make a wrist pin cushion. I need one. All right, so you see I'm pinned maybe five-eighths of an inch away from the edge, and I've put in a pin with a white, white head. So as I surge along this edge, then I can pull those pins out. Okay. If I knew how to pause this, I would. But if y'all want to go get a cup of coffee or a bowl of ice cream while I'm sitting here pinning, you just go right on ahead, but I'm going to pin my way around. My daddy says, do as I say do, not as I do. Don't put pins in your mouth. I got a tip too. Okay. Oh, look, we're coming up on the halfway point. See, it goes a lot faster than you think. that is together. Isn't that pretty? She's going to like it. My grandbabies are five and two and a half and they are so pretty and so sweet. They call me Mama. And they got a baby brother coming and right now all I know is we call him Nugget. At least I do. Okay, you're not supposed to put pins in your mouth, but I'm very bad about that. But I've been doing it for <clears throat> 29 years, so I don't think that's a habit I'm going to break anytime this week. And if you've got to go lay this out on your cutting table while you do it, then that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Okay, look, see, I got a little bit of a bubble. But you know what? I'll just work my way back this way just a little bit and I'll just tug on it just a smidge and it'll be all right. And how do I know it's gonna be all right? Because I just know. Because see this satin's got a little bit of give to it. See this satin, you can kind of see the satin's kind of ravelly. Satin's a polyester satin blend, and it's got a little bit of give. Can you see when I tug how it pulls together tight? So I know that satin's going to give a little bit as I'm surging it. So I know that I'm going to be able to work that right out. Okay, we're ready to go. Clean out my little tray. 
Okay, I'm gonna start back here at the beginning. I'm gonna start right here at this seam line. Don't just start in the middle. That's not pretty. Start at your seam line. I like having a free arm. If you're ever looking for a machine, look for one with a free arm. They really do come in handy. Okay. Now I'm gonna lift it. I'm gonna spin it a little bit. Okay. Needle all the way up. Jiggle it all under there. Make sure my needle, my fabric is flat. Press your foot down. All right, sorry for the noise, y'all. Get your fabric nice and flat. You don't want any puckers, cause I'm telling you, pulling out four surgery threads is a pain in the neck. You see what this bad boy is doing? You see that over there? Okay, here we go. You see, as I keep going, I keep stopping and flattening my work. I'm making sure that what's underneath is flat, what's on top is flat. I've got three layers here, and so I keep feeling that everything is flat. You want to absolutely avoid puckers in your work, because they're not going to be pretty, and you're going to want to pull them out. Coming up on that cross, that cross piece. Almost done. Six inches to go. And drift right off to the side, and you are finito bandito. Let's see what we got. All right, let's check all our seams all the way around. La 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 la. for the grand <laughs> Would you look at that? Would you look at that? Okay, one more step. I'm going to take this over to my sewing machine. You want to go over there with me? Lights, camera. <laughs> Such a far trip. So what I'm going to do with the quarter inch foot is I'm going to do a nice little stitch right along this edge, just as a little top stitch, okay? Just to add a nice little detail. And again, I'm going to start right here, right there. Okay. Press 
Yes, they're famous. Oh my goodness, they just, I think they collaborate with each other at night on how to run away from me. All right, before you start, make sure you grab your threads. holding my thread tails right here. Slide my fabric over there. Let's see if my needle is still where I left it. Nope. Yep. Okay. Y'all see I got my fingers doing a lot of stuff here. Here's one thread tail. Where's the other one? Where'd it go? There it is. Okay, so when y'all say, why get these nasty knots underneath? Well, if you got a lot of things you got to do while you're doing this, okay? All right, needle down, needle down, and here we go. All right, so I've got this little groove of my foot riding right there. It's riding right here, but I'm stitching on this side. And it's just adding a pretty little top stitch. And I lengthened my stitch just a little bit because this is a top stitch. It's not meant to necessarily hold anything. It's just there for the detail. I'm keeping the weight of my project up on the table, even though these don't weigh much. It's always important to do that. And again, I mentioned the free arm. My machine has a free arm. This is an old Janome that I'm using. It's an MC 10,000. I've had her for, oh goodness, 18 years. She's a good machine. You get, you, you get what you pay for when it comes to sewing machines, ladies. I'll tell you that right now. Although I have seen some expensive machines that were crap. I love my Janomis. Alrighty, we are almost there. Just past the halfway mark. See how I keep smoothing and flattening and pulling it around? Don't let your fabric get twisted up on you. Just going to do a teeny tiny back stitch, not so much that it needs the security, but just because it's pretty and I know I am dead on my mark. Of course, my clipping snippers. All right, now sometimes it's prettier when you pull your threads <clears throat> through to the back side and snip them off, but I don't think these are going to be noticed. And there you have it that little bit of a top stitch all the way around. You can see it. Well, if I would do a good job of showing it to you, you could see it. There you go. See it right there? It's almost a stitch in the ditch, but not quite. I didn't want a stitch in the ditch because, no, that's not my thing. But there it is. And here is La la, la 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 A pretty finished pillowcase. I'm gonna give it a really good press before all said and done. All right, yes, I'm sitting here in my sweatpants because I, I'm done for the day. But there it is. All righty, Molly at so-and-so's place, so-and-so's place.com. Yes, this is what I do in my free time when I have an opportunity is I sew. 
I love y'all. Thank you so much for watching. And if you have any questions, you can send them to mollyeducates at gmail.com. You can call me at the shop, 423-285-5959. I hope y'all have a wonderful evening. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.